Good evening, Bahamas. You're tuned in to MB12 Weekend, broadcasting from Cable 12 Studios on Robinson Road. Coming up tonight in news, the National Security Minister launching the latest social program to aid in the fight against crime. The DNA leader says Bahamians are losing confidence in government. BEC's Managers Union warns of load shedding this summer. Plus, looking for love? One doctor says he can help you find the one. I'm Paige McCartney, and we've got those stories and more straight ahead on MB12 Weekend. Welcome once again to MB12. More than 50% of Bahamian children are living in single parent homes with no father present, according to Minister of National Security Dr. Bernard Nottage. And it's this absence of fathers in the home that he and law enforcement officials believe is contributing to the crime menace in the country. For that reason, the ministry today launched the Give Every Child a Father program at Salem Baptist Church. The program seeks to pair at-risk youth with male mentors from a cross-section of society in an effort to fill the void. In a study we did just recently of school children, 84% of school children live in a home where their mother is. Only 42% live in a home where the father is. And only 30% live in a home where there's both mother and father. They consistently report feeling abandoned when their fathers are not involved in their lives, struggling with their emotions and bouts of self-loathing. They have more difficulties with social adjustment and are more likely to report problems with friendships and manifest behavioral problems. Many develop a swagger, intimidating persona attempt to disguise their underlying fears, resentments, anxieties, and unhappiness. Nottage said a fatherless home is the breeding ground for antisocial behavior. He gave statistics from the United States Criminal Justice Department that show that children who grow up in fatherless homes are 20 times more likely to end up in jail, 32 times more likely to run away, 9 times more likely to drop out of school, and 10 times more likely to abuse drugs. The litany of disaster continues in the U.S. 85% of all children that exhibit behavioral disorders come from fatherless homes. 90% of all homeless and renovated homes. 71% of all high school dropouts come from fathers' homes. 71% of teenage pregnancies are the children of single parents. 75% of all adolescent parent patients in chemical abuse centers come from fathers' homes. 63% of youth suicides are from fathers' homes. 80% of rapists. 70% of juveniles and state facilities come from fathers' homes. The minister lamented that young Bahamian men are an endangered species, adding that in his constituency of Bain and Grantstown alone, only half of school-aged children actually complete high school. In the constituency that I represent, only 50, 50 just over 50% of the children go beyond the ninth grade. They drop out of school or they get put out of school or they get suspended from school. Many of them complain that they don't go to school because they're afraid of what happens on their way to school or on their way from school. Today, 50 men pledged to commit their time to mentoring at-risk youths. However, officials revealed that more than 80 have signed up to be a part of the program. And I thank those who have already come forward to serve as fathers. Remember, we can help a young person to be himself or herself by our own willingness to steep ourselves temporarily in their world, in their private feelings and their experiences. The ministry is encouraging more men to step forward to contribute to the fight against crime by becoming a mentor. In other news tonight, leader of the Democratic National Alliance, Branville McCartney, says the Christie administration deceived the Bahamian people when it campaigned in 2012 because never once did it mention on the campaign trail that it would introduce a new tax. 
The DNA leader added that the key national issues the Progressive Liberal Party claimed to have the answers to on the campaign trail, including job creation, stimulating the economy, and tackling what he called the crime epidemic in the Bahamas, have not been addressed. McCartney called government's undertakings a failure. During the election, they never mentioned that they would put a tax on the backs of poor, struggling Bahamians. They never mentioned that. They gave promises upon promises about other things, pie-in-the-sky promises. And when they came to office, they were adamant about introducing value-added tax on the 1st of July, 2014. The DNA leader said Bahamians are losing confidence in government because of its handling of the value-added tax issue. He said he doesn't believe government had any clue initially of what that implementation would entail, yet it was adamant about moving ahead with the new tax regime. This government is just again doing the same thing they do over and repeatedly, and that is not knowing what they're doing when it comes down to running this country. You have the prime minister saying one thing, and the minister, of, uh, the, the minister of State for Finance saying something else in such a significant issue that should be cause for concern for every Bahamian, whether, whether you're PLP, DNA, or FNM. McCartney said before there's any kind of tax reform, government must address wastage and fiscal management. Yeah, I don't hear the government talking about fixing the wastage or the mismanagement before introducing a new tax regime. These things must be dealt with. We waste millions and millions of dollars because of the wastage and mismanagement, the cronyism. And we, we must ensure that at the end of the day, the taxes that we have now, real property tax, business licenses, that they are collected. I'm told there's in the vicinity of close to half a billion dollars outstanding. And government anticipates that the cost of living will increase by approximately 4% once VAT is implemented in January 2015. Well, the Bahamas Electricity Corporation may be forced to conduct a load shedding exercise this summer if a contingency plan is not put in place soon, according to President of the Bahamas Electrical and Utilities Managerial Union, Clinton Minnis. Minnis said the summer months, which coincide with the Atlantic hurricane season, are the most taxing on the corporation's network, which has to produce upwards of 240 million kilowatts of power. Minnis says executive management has not indicated what steps would be taken if there's a system failure caused by hurricane damage or increased load demands during peak months. At present, we have sufficient install capacity in BEC to meet the demand. However, we are dealing with old equipment at times and they fail. Mm -hmm. And that's why I think one of the posture I heard the chairman mention sometimes in the paper when we have load shedding or plant failure, he said it was only 15 or 20 minutes, uh, it, it, we get it right back. But people want reliable, consistent services. Mm -hmm. And so I think um, even though uh, we have sufficient install capacity, you have to be wise enough if you know you're going to run the risk plant failure. Mm -hmm. Uh, for people to have load shedding. And I remember times when we had massive uh, load shedding. We had to put people on cycles, you know, and we don't want to come to that. We, we're going towards a Bahama operation in this country, and so we need to re make sure we have sufficient plant available. Last year, government invested $10 million in backup generators to support the network in the event of generation failure. But Minnis said managers have not been advised of a similar plan for this summer season. And he believes it has something to do with the pending privatization of BEC. The reason for not putting in place a contingency plan by May of this year was because the corporation should have been sold. Uh, I can understand not investing millions of dollars in uh, those rental power because whoever was going to purchase the plant would have had that responsibility and not the government. And, and so therefore, if, that, if the delay of deciding who will run the corporation or how the corporation, whatever the decision is, uh, has been changed, if the reason has been changed or the time has been delayed, then you ought to put in place your plan because time doesn't wait on anybody. <laughs> the sum is still here. Minnis added that BEC is already at risk to start load shedding based on the number of outages that took place over the past week. He said Chairman Leslie Miller must provide answers to employees and the general public. Any 
manager, any chairman of any corporation, you're talking about Microsoft, Apple, whatever, if you don't have a contingency plan for your peak season, on your high risk season, then somebody ought to give somebody the walking ticket. Mm -hmm. I must see your plan. How are you going to secure this country? What are you going to say to me?